In this video, we're going to take a look at comparing data sets using box and whisker plots. Box and whisker plots are just one way that we can get a quick visual of a data set. And you know what they say about uh, pictures? Pictures worth a thousand words, right? So we can easily look at that picture and without even knowing very much math, we can get a basic idea of what's going on with our data. So a few things to notice just before we get into the pieces of the box and whisker plot. Notice that this box is smaller than this box. The box on uh, data set M is smaller than the box on N. So there's uh, the data set in M is closer together and in data set N our data is spread out a little bit more. That's just one thing that we can notice. So the first thing I want to talk about here is the different pieces of a box and whisker plot. And this might be review, but it's really important that we can pick out the parts of the box and whisker plot and know what information that is giving us. So for plot M, let's find the minimum first of all. The minimum value is the one that's furthest to the left. So if we look furthest to the left right here, we're at 20 for plot M. Then, if we look for the maximum, go to the other end. We're over here at 70, so the maximum is at 70. Then, Q1. Q1 stands for the first quartile, and that is the point that's right here on the left side of the box. And so for this one, it's going to be at 35. Then, we have the median sometimes referred to as the second quartile, but that's the median. Remember, median is the middle, so that's this point right here, which is located on at 40. Then, the third quartile, Q3, that puts us right over here, that's at 50. And then, IQR. IQR stands for the inner quartile range. This is the length of the box. Okay, so if we look at the box, the box starts here, it goes to over here, it goes from 35 to 50. How long is that? 50 minus 35 would be 15. So the IQR is 15. And then the range, the range is the overall biggest minus the smallest. So that one, we have those two numbers right here, 70 and 20, subtract and we get 50. Okay, now, Let's do the same thing, but this time looking at plot n, and then we'll see if uh, what we can observe about the two different uh, box and whisker plots. So, same kind of thing, minimum for plot n, right over here, this time it's at 10. Maximum, over here at 70. The Q1, first quartile, 30. The median, or the second quartile, for that one it's also at 40. The third quartile, 55. IQR, remember that's the length of the box. So we are from 55 to 30. So it's these two, the Q3 minus Q1. So 55 minus 30, that would be, let's see, 25. And finally, the range 70 minus 10 will be 60. Okay, so what do these numbers tell us? Well, we can see the plot n is much more spread out based on the numbers, but again, it's probably easier just to look at that picture. Also, remember that each piece of a box and whisker plot has 25% of the data. So 25% of our data is from 10 to 30, 25% of our data is from 30 to 40, 25% from 40 to 55, and then 55 to 70. Another way that people sometimes talk about those quartiles is percentiles. And percentiles um, from a box and whisker plot, this spot right here would be the 25th percentile. This would be the 50th percentile. This would be the 75th percentile. We can't be exact in terms of what percentile something would be in, but if we had a piece of data and it was like 65, we know that would be above the 75th percentile from data set N. Okay, so that's another thing that we can talk about there. 
the last piece I want to talk about in this video is the shape of the different graphs symmetric means that we can fold it in half and it would match up pretty well now if we look this one right here it's got the box on this side there's 10 on this side there's 15 over here we've got from 55 to 70 there would be 15 there and there's 20 there I would say that that one's approximately symmetric it means if we were to take it and fold it in half it would match up so either side of the median there is approximately the same approximately it doesn't have to be perfect skewed the skewed ones sometimes get a little bit confused but here's a way that you can remember it so if it's skewed to the left that means it's pulled out to the left and by pulled out I mean the right hand side is shorter and you can think of it as stretched to the left so this would be skewed left okay that means more of the data is to the right here in that smaller space because remember 25 percent in each portion of our box and whisker plot skewed right you can probably guess is going the other way so we're long on the right hand side something like that and then maybe not so much on the left okay so that would be an example of skewed right depending on the um, how it's skewed then our data we might want to look at some different things in terms of our measures of center and so on so we'll worry about that another time but for this time just a quick review box and whisker plots a great visual way to see differences in data sets and get a a good overall idea of how spread out our data is and where exactly things are located we can look at remembering that the box has the middle 50 percent of the data each piece of a box and whisker plot has 25 percent of the data and we can easily compare and remember those shapes symmetric and matches up and uh, skewed left it's getting stretched to the left skewed right is getting stretched to the right hope this video is helpful keep working hard on your math you can do it